you can borrow a little gun. So it's better. <laughs> so my first question uh, for you is how a young black woman from Arkansas becomes one of the most famous classical singer. Hard work. <laughs> uh, I would say it's my my destiny, really, and that I, through hard work, that I followed what was a talent and became a passion to do music, but to music with a, a reason, not just to stand on the stage, but to stand on the stage and leave something behind. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was uh, but a lot of hard work, but a lot of love, a lot of passion. Okay. Um, were your parents musicians as well? My parents were not musicians. My father was a pastor, my mother was a teacher, but they sang in the church. and. Uh, as I recall, they sang well, but uh, not, you know, we, nobody considered that the fact that I sang well was anything special. And I think that was quite good in a way, because it was just something normal to sing for me for, for a long time. And it was nothing special. So uh, I sang because I could. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. And uh, did you sing in a, in a choir in church? I sang in choir uh, in church, but I sang quite a lot in choir in school. And in school, I sang many things. We sang jazz. We sang uh, we sang s musicals. We tried to do the Messiah at Christmas and Bach cantatas at Easter. And uh, so I grew up singing all kinds of music without any boundaries. So music was either good music or music that I loved, but it wasn't serious music or not serious music. And so I that really just uh, means that I have always had an open uh, uh, esprit, uh, attitude yeah. toward toward all kinds of music. Yeah. How did you how did you uh, get in touch with classical music? Uh, well, I sang, like I said, I sang in school, but uh, I um, I was I decided to do because my, I did my studies at university in uh, chemistry and mathematics. And music was something I did on the side, yeah. and uh, I decided to take voice lessons because you could have, you had there were certain courses that are required and other that you can elect. If. And I thought, you know, if I took voice lessons, that would raise my average, you know, mm -hmm. because it was, I considered it to be an easy class, and uh, and because it was fun. And uh, there was someone who was taking a lesson who was entering competition. And she said, why don't you enter? And so I entered, and I won for the state of Nebraska, the Metropolitan Opera Auditions, without having a clue what I was singing. So I went to the regionals in Minneapolis, and I was so grateful not to win, because I think I would have made a fool, I thought I would make a fool of myself in New York. But that was the beginning of an interest of a lot of people at my university in me, and they offered me a scholarship for a summer camp. It, Aspen, Colorado, and they chose a teacher for me that summer, and that was Jenny Terrell, and that was the woman who became my teacher, my only teacher, as a matter of fact, until she died in 1973. Okay. And uh, so it was a great leap of faith. I, I was standing in front of an open, empty. I had no idea what, what it was going to be. I had no preconceived ideas, and. Um, so I can't say that I ever dreamed about doing what I am today because it was not a dream that was afforded to me when I was a child. So uh, I took my first great leap of faith when I decided to finish my studies and go to New York to study with Jenny Terrell without having any idea where that might lead me. But I felt that when I arrived to the age that I am today, which is the same age as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, <laughs> um, that I would want to be able to tell my children that when I was 20, I tried something that was really crazy and it didn't work out. But I'm glad to be where I am today and rather than sitting and saying, oh, you know, she's singing on TV. I could have done that too, but I decided to marry your father and have you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wanted to be able to say to myself, I tried this and we'll see where it takes me. And I had no idea it would take me to where I am today, but every bit of the way has been 
filled with joy and some difficulties, uh, some setbacks, uh, some cherished outcomes have not become what I wanted them to be. But all in all, I've uh, I've moved on slowly and slow enough to keep my feet firmly in my in the ground, the dirt of Arkansas, where I come from, and fast enough not to discourage me from continuing. And uh, who is your biggest influence as far as voice? Well, that would have to be my, my own teacher, Jenny okay, Terrell. Okay. Um, because with she be because when I came to New York, it was uh, be I grew up in a very strict Protestant family uh, where work was praised and anything time you were not working, you were wasting time. Mm -hmm. And so to have a to have a work that was had always been something of pleasure, I felt quite guilty about it. Mm -hmm. But when I worked with my teacher, I saw that being an artist or wanting to be, striving to be an artist was something quite noble, and that uh, human life needs art as much as it needs the air we breathe and the water that we drink, and that to strive to be an artist was something necessary for, for humanity. And so therefore I could allow myself to do that and uh, she was an influence on me in that way because she became my, um, I would say, definition of an artist, which is someone who is at the service of their art, who stands behind the art, mm -hmm. and as opposed to being in front of it. And uh, also, she was a great influence musically because she was, she was called a musician's musician, as opposed to being a singer and uh, and a musician, you know. Okay. And I wanted to be a musician's musician. I she didn't want to be. American? She was Russian. She was Russian. She was American citizen, but okay. she was of Russian. And she was, interestingly enough, a refugee. She had been a refugee from. She had left Russia and gone to Europe. She started her career in France at the Opera Comique, and then she fled, uh, really, on the last boat from Nice uh, to America during the Second World War. So the fact that I started to work with refugees was quite interesting when I realized that she was a refugee and without her having been a refugee, I wouldn't be where I am today. So uh, that is really one of the positive things about about refugees that people often don't see is how they can enrich our lives uh, in so many ways. <laughs>